Leviticus chapter 2. On Sunday nights we make our way through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And we pick things up in Leviticus chapter 2. By way of a short review in, in light of uh, my absence last week, the book of Leviticus comes from a Greek word meaning things that pertain to the Levites. It is essentially a uh, instruction manual for the priests of the children of Israel. Chapters 1 through 7 of Leviticus give, gives them very, very specific instruction regarding five offerings that were a part of their regular worship of the Lord. Uh, the burnt offering, the grain offering, the peace offering, sin offering, and trespass uh, offering. Last time we uh, studied chapter 1 having to do with the burnt sacrifice. Uh, one of the unique characteristics of the burnt sacrifice is that it was burned entirely. The uh, entire thing, except for the hide, that was given to the priest. But it was burned virtually entirely uh, on the altar, and what it represented was complete consecration of the worshiper to God, that their life belonged uh, completely to uh, to, uh, to him. And uh, that's what uh, the worshiper would be communicating to the Lord. We went in, uh, with some fair depth in, in chapter 1 to a lot of the imagery and how it points to Christ. We won't do that in every one of these offerings, but uh, much of that imagery holds through uh, related to all of, all of the offerings. In chapter 2, um, uh, the Lord speaks to the children of Israel, gives them instruction related to the grain offering. When anyone offers a grain offering uh, to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour. The grain offering uh, represented as it was offered to the Lord. It was an expression of thanksgiving on the part of the offer to the Lord. It was a, a thanksgiving offering to God, thanking Him for His daily provision uh, in their lives and specifically bread, what could be made from grain. And so it was an expression of, of the worshiper's heart, a recognition that we depend upon you for our daily bread. We depend upon you to provide for us. You have provided for us. And so we offer this grain offering as an expression of our, our thanksgiving. The, beautiful, the offering's also a beautiful picture of Jesus as the bread of life and uh, what uh, the grain was and what that meant to the children of Israel in a physical sense, that daily sustenance for fuel and for energy and all that to be thankful for on a physical level. Jesus declared himself in the New Testament to be the bread of life. And so that recognition of what he brings to our life spiritually. We're, we are, uh, as Christians, where there are two men, there are two people uh, alive in each of us. There's the natural man, the physical man that needs these physical things, but we also have a spiritual man uh, inside of us by the Holy Spirit. And, there, and this whole side of our life that needs the blessings of the Lord, <clears throat> the feeding of the Word, and all these things that we have in Christ, uh, as much for our spirit as our body needs daily bread. And of course, Jesus, it is His sacrifice on the cross that made it possible for those things to be internalized into our lives and to uh, be provided for us each day of, of our, our pilgrimage. I think what a joy it is uh, uh, as a Christian to live a life of thanksgiving uh, to the Lord uh, for our physical blessings in life, for our spiritual uh, blessings in life. Someone has said that uh, they feel sorry for the atheist and the agnostic because when they want to be thankful, they have no one to thank. And uh, there's a lot of, that's not a cheap shot. There's a lot of truth to that. And one of the great things about the Christian life is to recognize God is the origin of these blessings in our life. And there's something wonderful about receiving a blessing from someone and then uh, acknowledging it, recognizing it, and then enjoying that blessing with the one who has given us that blessing. And that's our portion as Christians, to think that all this stuff is coming my way as an atheist or whatever in life just by virtue of the I, me, and my Sure, you get to partake of all, of all of those things, but who do you enjoy it with? You have no one to enjoy it with, like we have the privilege of enjoying it with the Lord and offering up thanksgiving to Him. It's a privilege 
uh, to be a thankful person. It's a privilege to have thanksgiving, an attitude of thanksgiving, a constant cause for thanksgiving, to be a part of our lives as Christians, and it's always there. And it's one of the things that makes us rich. And so this offering was a thanksgiving and an acknowledgement, Lord, thank you for how you bless us, how you take care of of our our daily needs. It was to be an offering made of fine uh, flour, the very best flour. There wasn't to be any kind of grit or corn coarseness or impurities in it. Again, speaking of Jesus' perfection, his sinlessness, no guilt in his life of sin, no coarseness in his life, uh, no impurity found in him. Boy, did they look for it and they couldn't find it. As Jesus said, which of you convicts me of sin, can accuse me of sin? And uh, nobody could break the silence of that question that he offered uh, to them. So he shall... uh, pour oil on it and put frankincense on it so it speaks of olive oil so you'd bring this grain offering and this flour offering you'd pour olive oil on it also put frankincense on it the olive oil represents the Holy Spirit in the scriptures and so it speaks of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' uh, life it also speaks of the importance of the Holy Spirit to our spiritual life to a healthy strong uh, spiritual life the frankincense uh, and incense being a picture of prayer in the scriptures and uh, because it's a sweet smell to the Lord when they would offer the incense to the Lord and so it speaks of the facts that our our thanksgiving it speaks of the fact that we recognize his blessings and we thank him for it that that's something sweet to him that's the way a dad is and an and a, and a earthly dad is evil compared to our heavenly father it blesses him and it brings him pleasure when we give him uh, thanksgiving and so also speaks of the place of prayer and the life and the ministry of Jesus both then uh, and and now and the importance of, of uh, prayer in our spiritual life again not only the ministry of the Holy Spirit but prayer for us to be spiritually the strong people that, that we need to be now some of the details about the offering he shall bring it that is the offer to Aaron's sons, the priests, one of whom shall take it from his uh, from it his handful of fine flour and oil with all of its frankincense, and the priest shall burn it, and then here it is as a memorial. So it's a remembrance. It's saying, God, I remember that this has come from you. It was to be burnt as a memorial on the altar, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Then the rest of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It was most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. So he might bring a big kind of bag of wheat um, to kind of offer to the Lord. The priest would just take a handful of it, uh, and then there would be the frankincense and the oil applied to it. That would be burnt on the fire, but the remaining portion that had been brought would be given to the priest. Again, remember the priests and the tribe of Levi were not would not be given a portion of land allotted in the land, and uh, so God provided for them from the offerings of the people. And so this is the way that they got uh, grain and, and uh, flour for their uh, daily needs. And the rest of the grain offering shall be... Oh, already said that. <laughs> we don't want to go backwards, do we? Verse 4. And, and you shall bring an offering uh, as an offering, a grain offering, baked in the oven. So some alternatives to bringing just a handful of, uh, of uh, fine flour in your hands. You could bring it uh, already kind of baked in the oven, made into some kind of a, of a loaf or something, but it would be a very flat loaf because there's no leaven in it. Uh, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. But if your offering is a grain offering, baked in a pan. So you you could kind of have a, a kind of a pancake offering deal. It shall be a fine flour, unleavened, mixed with oil. And you shall break it in pieces, pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your offering is a grain offering baked in a covered pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. You shall bring the grain offering that is made of these things to the Lord. And when it is presented to the priest, he shall bring it to the altar. And then the priest shall take it. Take from the grain offering a memorial.
memorial portion and burn it on the altar. It is an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Again, it's good to be reminded of how much he notices and appreciates our thanksgiving directed to him. Never eat a meal without thanking him. And what is left of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his son's. It is most holy of the offerings of the to the Lord made by fire. No grain offering which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey and offering to the Lord made by fire. And so it was uh, not, you you couldn't bring any kind of... uh, of, uh, uh, grain or uh, the, the the flour that had any kind of leaven in it. Leaven is a picture of sin in the Bible because it creates a fermentation, which is essentially a, a corruption. And uh, there is no corruption in uh, Jesus, nor is there to be any corruption or sin mixed with our thanksgiving that we're being lifting up to the Lord. Our thanksgiving should be offered from a pure heart, not a sin-filled heart or a half hearted heart toward the Lord, but it is to be a pure heart. Honey was also prohibited because it introduces the same process of fermentation um, as, uh, as leaven does. And as for the offering of the first fruits, and so he speaks now of the first fruits. The first fruits, you don't have to memorize this for a test or anything, but the first fruits is kind of a subcategory of the grain offering, where they wouldn't just bring uh, flour in some form, but where they're getting ready, uh, they see as they go out to their fields and they see that the wheat uh, harvest is going to be, wow, this is going to be a good year. Thank you, Lord. And uh, they would go and cut a section of it, bring it green uh, to the temple or to the tabernacle, offer it to the Lord, even before it was something that they could eat. The, the, the offer would be so eager to say, thank you, God, for how you've taken care of us this year, that, that he would bring that even before it could be in, in the grain or the uh, uh, flower form. As for the offering of the first fruits, you shall offer them to the Lord, but they shall not be burned on the altar for a sweet aroma. And every offering of your grain offering you shall season with salt. Again, salt, speaking of uh, it arrests corruption. uh, And and so it speaks of purity. Once again, the offering was to be offered with a pure heart, or thanksgiving with with a pure heart. You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. If you offer a grain offering of your first fruits to the Lord, you shall offer for the grain offering of your first fruits grain heads of grain roasted on the fire, grain beaten from full heads and you shall put oil on it lay frankincense on it all representing the same things it is a grain offering then the priest shall burn the memorial portion part of its beaten grain and part of its oil with all the frankincense as the offering made by fire to the Lord and so uh, the, the beautiful Thanksgiving